Yo, what's going on, IGTV? This is your boy, B. Grange, getting ready 30 seconds away from going live on the radio on Spreaker. We actually have 15 seconds. So I hope you uh, enjoy the show. It's only 15 minutes long. As a matter of fact, we have five seconds before we go to air. You ready for this? What's up, Drew? Let's do it. Hey, this is your boy B. Grinch. Welcome to another episode of Underground Live Radio with your boy B. Grinch. You know, I was reading an article and it made a lot of sense. You know, people are really downing on the police for unlawful unlawful shootings and whatnot. But uh, I read a good article and it happens to be true. People are wondering why police officers shoot people when they believe it is unnecessary to do so. And I've encountered this myself in law enforcement. Um, when you have a coked up dude that is not responding to a taser, not responding to pepper spray, and not responding to more than one or two officers, there's only one thing you could do. And that's put that motherfucker down. Because not only is he, not only does he have the opportunity to hurt you or the other officer, but he has an opportunity to hurt bystanders. So therefore, lethal force is sometimes necessary when you really don't think so. You know, but as, a, as a bystander, as an outsider, you just see a cop pull a gun and shoot, but you're not the cop dealing with a dude that could be on PHP and not responding to a taser, not responding to pepper spray, not responding to commands, not responding to such. And with that being said, sometimes lethal force is necessary. Um, no cop wants to kill a fucking person. Believe me. Um, as far as I know, no cop wants to kill a person. Most cops don't want to kill people. You know, it's a hard thing when you have to draw your gun and point it at somebody, unless you're Coral Springs police and you're like, I'm going to blow your fucking head off. I've been told that twice. Actually, I had an AR-15 put right in my fucking face. That's a semi-automatic machine gun. And uh, it wasn't fun. It was about two inches from my nose. Oh, me, I forgot to put on the do not disturb. I'm so stupid. Let me do that right now. All right, now we're good. For our Instagram watchers, so they don't have to hear noises and whatnot. But um, how you doing, Drew? It's nice to see you. Drew is my IGTV co-host. She, You don't get to see her questions or her responses, but I'll be sure enough to let you guys know exactly what's going on with Drew. Um, yeah, but, you know, police officers in general, as far as I would like to think, don't want to shoot anybody, unless, of course, it's necessary. Now, you have a couple of scumbags out there that want to make names for themselves and whatnot, and just might happen to um, put a bullet in the motherfucker, put a cap in one's ass. But uh, I don't think that's the general consensus among police officers is to shoot people. But then again, I could be wrong. Um, one thing I wanted to really get into, and this is a serious subject, um, is mental illness, okay? Um, I was reading an article about depersonalization, okay? And what depersonalization is, it's the persistent feeling of observing one's self outside one's body and having a sense that your surroundings aren't real, okay? And I've actually experienced that before. Now, as you most, most of you know, I'm schizophrenic and I am on a boatload of fucking medications and um, it's a crazy thing to think of things that, you know, think of your surroundings as not being real. It's also a really damn fucking hard thing to think that you are paranoid. And I actually, at one time, it's funny, when I took the police exam, the psychological, you know, and I've taken other tests before like this, and they ask you, are they after you or are they watching you? And I would look at that fucking question and I'd be like, are you fucking kidding me? That's the stupidest fucking question ever. It's like, if that doesn't scream crazy, then nothing does. But uh, at one time, I actually got so paranoid that I actually thought people were watching me and that I was being watched and listened to. And to tell your psychiatrist this, it's like, you're not going to believe this shit, doc. But uh, I actually think that I'm being watched. You know, someone's after me. And I don't know what the fuck to, you know, what to do. Let me see if this mic is working. Yes, it is. New mic. I got this mic right here for IGTV. 
Um, the fact of the matter is, is that when you have to tell your doctor, listen, I know this sounds fucking crazy. All right. And I realize how I'm about to sound when I say this. All right. But I feel like motherfuckers watching me. I feel like I'm, I'm being watched and followed and whatnot. That's a scary fucking thing. All right. Those are surroundings that aren't real. Um, you know, I'm not talking about being in cartoon land where you think that fucking your house is not real. Although I've had hallucinations where, uh, my surroundings have not been real. I will tell you real quick. I actually once had a hallucination that my living room turned into an office building and that there were people actually walking outside of my room and, uh, as an office. And they were saying, Hey, how you doing, B? How you doing, B? And I'm actually talking back to them saying, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And the supervisor comes out to me and tells me to jump on the computer that she wants reports. It's a true story. I actually jump on my desk where there's actually no computer at all. And I start typing on the fucking desk. And then I go back to the table and start fucking with my tablet. And this probably all happened. I don't know if it was an actual hallucination or if I really encountered going to my desk and typing on my desk. Now, as far as I'm aware, it was as real as could be. Um... I was actually at my desk typing on a fucking desk. Uh, what happened was I came out of it and I was sitting on my couch and I was like, holy shit, that's fucking crazy. There was also another time where I was sitting on my, on my patio drinking coffee and um, I was looking into my coffee, kind of staring at it. And these dead ants start rising up um, to the top of my coffee. And this is true. These ants turned into purple beetles, purple and blue beetles that started flying out of my coffee past my face into my slider. I could hear them bouncing off of my fucking slider. Now, this hallucination is a pretty big fucking hallucination. All right. Um, I knew it was hallucinations, you know, because I'm pretty much self-aware of my illness. And um, you should be, too. But, uh, and then there was a time that I thought my ceiling was caving in on me and I actually fucking hit the ground. You know, I got fucking problems, but now you see I'm well medicated and I don't hallucinate anymore, which is a good thing because hallucinations suck. Although once you embrace your problem and you embrace the fact that you're mentally ill and you understand your mental illness and you actually come out of denial and know that you're mentally ill, it's a lot more easy to handle. Um, people in denial, they don't know what the fuck is going on. And, and, you know, it's like you got a fucking problem and usually everybody else around you can see it because of your behavior. Whereas just like when your bitch is cheating on you and fucking your neighbors, you're the last to know. It's just like mental illness. You're the last to know. So I've gotten into the practice years ago of understanding my mental incapacitations and embracing them and understanding them. Therefore, when I go through a episode, I am fully aware of what's going on. I am fully aware of what's real and what's not real because your personalization is a bitch. And usually they, they prescribe you benzos and, uh, you know, benzodiazepine, which is, um, like Xanax, like Klonopin, there are a bunch of them. And they're supposed to help, you know, depersonalization. I don't see how, but depersonalization comes with extreme anxiety. And I can understand that because when you're having a panic attack, things don't seem to be real. You know, other than the fact that you feel like you want to die, you know, and believe me, normal, healthy people experience anxiety, whereas anxiety, normal anxiety is different than an anxiety attack. An anxiety attack is when you start becoming, you know, short of breath, heart palpitations, feels like an elephant is sitting on your, on your chest. Very, very difficult to manage. Um, you can't think, you really don't want to move. It's a bitch. But I'll tell you what, that is nothing in comparison to a panic attack. A panic attack is like an atom bomb of anxiety, okay? When I have a panic attack, which I'm fortunate enough to only get about once a year, I literally drop to the fucking ground in the fetal position. This is no fucking joke, people. 
I fucking start shivering. Like the, like the temperature drops 30 degrees and fucking I, I, I shiver and I, I literally pray to a God that I do not believe in to end this. And I literally have to crawl slowly to my bed or to a blanket to get under a blanket. That's not helping me at all because this is all in my fucking head. All right. And I, and I wrap a blanket around me and I'm shiver. I literally shiver like I'm fucking freezing cold. What's up, Florida boy? Nice of you to tune back in. But um, panic attacks are a fucking bitch. And when you get a panic attack, therefore nothing around you is real. And everything is, your brain is a mechanism. It's, it's, it's the computer of your body. And it, it, it works on electric diodes. And your nervous system is the wiring that is connected to each and every part of your body. That stems from your brain. And when your brain becomes defunct, you become defunct. It's not a hard concept to understand. That's why I am an advocate of medication. Because although I am on like 11 different medications for my fucking ailments, I I take them every day. And a lot of people abuse their medications. And when I say abuse their medications, that means they either take them too often or they don't take them at all. Either one of those things are abuse. And if you're, when you don't take them, you're abusing yourself. You are lacking the serotonin, dopamine, or neoprenephrine that your brain needs in order to work. The levels drop in your head and therefore you are imbalanced. When you're chemically imbalanced, you can't expect to function properly. See, that's why I am on a dopamine inhibitor, I am on a serotonin inhibitor, and I'm on antipsychotics. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm a crazy motherfucker, guys. That shit's real. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, it's just something I have to deal with. And a lot of you guys have to deal with it, too. That's why I usually open myself up about mental illness, because, what, you think I do this show just for the fuck of it? It's therapy for me. You know, it gives me something to do during the day. Because I'm fucked up. Plus, half the shit that comes out of my mouth is fucked up. And that's really the excuse that I use. Because, oh, mentally ill. I pull pull out the fucking schizophrenic card all the fucking time. It's like, yo, man, I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm not responsible for the fucking utterance, the utter insanity that I display. But unfortunately, sometimes it's true. See, I'm perfectly normal right now, though, because I'm well medicated. And with being well medicated, you're actually to manage a, a normal life. You know, that's because I take my meds when I'm supposed to. I do not abuse my meds. And like I said earlier, abusing your meds is either taking them too often when you're not supposed to or abusing yourself by not taking the meds at all. And believe me, both abuses are horrible. Okay, you um, you certainly don't want to abuse your medication. You can overdose. You can run out of them. Look, for instance... If you're abusing your Klonopin or you're abusing your Xanax and you really need it and you're taking it fucking to party and you run out in two weeks or you run out in a week, that's three weeks of anxiety. You have to go without medication because your doctor is not going to believe that someone stole them from you or you dropped them down the sink. It might work one time, but believe me, after that, that shit ain't working no more. And you're stuck like fucking Chuck because it's a controlled substance. Your doctors don't really want to write you that shit. They do it because of the fact that they know you're suffering. But you can't abuse it because then you can't use it, especially when you need it. So don't abuse your medications and don't abuse yourself. If you're on medication, make sure you take your medication as prescribed. Because when your levels are off, you need that shit. You know, um, there are a lot of people that watch my LS TV show, Underground Live. And I would think, I've gotten messages before on Messenger about people, because I'm real open about my mental ailments. And they've called me looking for advice. And I tell them, you know, are you seeing a psychiatrist? And they say no. Are you on medication? And they say no, even from a general practitioner. And uh, you, you got to see a shrink, man. And if you don't have medical insurance... You have to fucking see a shrink anyway because of the fact that they'll work with you on a sliding scale. So that's my sermon for today. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something. Mental illness is a bitch and you certainly don't want to fucking suffer from it. 
With that being said, folks, remember to tune in Tuesday nights, 9 o'clock, Underground Live, LS TV. This is your boy, B. Grinch. Say, oh, and go to www.bgrinch.com. Don't forget that shit, because that shit is fucking awesome. And Chicky Baba XO, you just missed the show, but that's okay. Go back and watch it. Guys, keep it real. Love each other. And peace the fuck out, yo. I gotta just move this fucking camera. Oh, no, I don't. I have to move this camera at all. See you guys. Take care. Thanks for watching.